All right, absolute value, definition and function part one. So initially, what you see here on the top of the screen is a symbol for absolute value, those two vertical lines. Absolute value of A is equal zero when A is positive. Absolute value of A is equal zero when A is zero. And the absolute value of A is equal to negative A when A is less than zero. So for example, absolute value of negative three, according to the definition, will be equal to negative negative three. So this is, you, the result is positive three. When you're looking for absolute value of positive three, the result is also the same. And when it's zero, the answer is zero. So thinking about absolute value is uh, similar to thinking of the length of a unit on a line, number line. So let's say the first example between zero and negative three. So between zero and negative three, the distance measured will be three units. So this is how you see absolute value. Similarly, between zero and positive three, so the distance also is the same, three units. And there's no length here when x is equal to zero, so the distance is zero units. And you can think of other examples, say between point 0.5 and two on the number line. So the distance, absolute value, three units. Let's say between negative 2, 5, negative 5, and negative 2, the distance also is 3 units. So the outcome is always positive or 0. Okay. Absolute value function. Value function. So we will define absolute fu value function as y is equal to absolute value of x. Okay. So if you were to set up the table of values with x values that are randomly selected, and on the right-hand side you would have y is equal to absolute value of x. Supposedly, I have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So according to the definition, if you plug it in inside absolute value negative 2, the outcome is 2 here, 1, 0, 1, and 2. And say you want to plot that on the graph. So say x and y axis over here. Okay, so this is my x, this is my y. So let's say you plot negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So what you will see, for any real number of x, I would have uh, kind of a V-shape graph. So this is Y is equal to absolute value of X. Feature of this graph. So let's say domain. So the domain will be set of real values. X is element of R. This is how you would put it together. Range of the function. So y is greater or equal to 0. Because you see the lowest value here, that vertex 0, and any other value is greater than 0. And another feature of the graph, it's symmetrical in y-axis. In 
y-axis. So this is like a mirror image. This branch and that are symmetrical in this vertical line. So we'll say that for any negative value of x, absolute value of negative x, results with the same outcome as absolute value of positive x. So we call this type of function as even function. Even function. Okay, so to summarize, we did plot several points here and the graph that we have obtained looks like a v-shaped function so you can think of a straight line and that negative branch was flipped in x-axis to get that v-shape okay, now we're going to talk about transformation of absolute value function so general description will be let's say a absolute value of x minus b plus c so what each coefficient or constant does so as coefficient a would just bring those two branches of uh, v-shape closer if a is greater than 1 or further apart if a is less than 1. So this is similar effect as uh, with slope of a function. Steeper the slope then the growth is uh, occurring faster and then when the value of a is between 0 and 1, a fraction, then the slope value is causing the graph to grow very slowly. So B, that value is related to horizontal shift. So either you're going to shift it to the left or to the right. And C value would represent the vertical shift. So for example, let's work with 2x minus 1. So the value plus 3. So let us compare this graph to the parent function, the original y is equal to absolute value of x. Okay, so let this be absolute value of x right here. This is y is equal to absolute value of x. So this is that line. Okay, it's 0, 0. Now, 2, so the slope will be twice as greater than the, what we have here. So 2 times 1 will be 2. So you would expect this to be, those two branches to be closer together. And of course that is to be symmetrical in y-axis. X minus one. So now zero would occur when X is one. So you're gonna have a shift, horizontal shift one unit to the right and three units up. And now the graph will have generally the same shape but steeper slope. So this will be the graph of the function 2, absolute value x minus 1 plus 3. So one unit here and three units going up. And also we can have this as you can imagine done in any direction on the Cartesian plane. Just to remember what would happen if the coefficient in front was negative. So let's look at the graph of x plus 3 minus 1. So think of following. 
negative two in front will flip the graph in x-axis plus three causes the graph to shift three units to the left okay and one unit down okay so without negative two you would see you would see something like that since you reflecting it in x-axis you will see a graph which is symmetrical to the one shown with dotted line okay so basically this is how the transformation of absolute value is attained thank you for watching this video and inviting you for part two